Losses to Georgia agriculture expected to top $1 billion. That following last week's devastating Category 4 hurricane, Hurricane Michael, the third most intense Atlantic hurricane to make landfall in the contiguous U.S. behind the 1935 Labor Day hurricane and Camille in 1969. Also the strongest in terms of maximum sustained wind speed to strike the U.S. since Andrew in 1992. The loss in agriculture, though, really pales in comparison to the 18 who died in the U.S. alone and the 46 still missing. But Georgia Ag Commissioner Gary Black says nearly all of the state's cotton crop is lost. Half of the peanut crop has been affected. Poultry represents the state's top agricultural commodity, contributes $23.3 billion to the economy, was hit hard as well, with more than 92 chicken houses destroyed. And pecan groves decimated as well as farmers are now in their third year of hurricane losses in an industry where it takes at least seven years for those trees to recover. USDA last week projecting a 2.9 million bale cotton crop on Georgia's 1.4 million acres of cotton. This comes as the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, began issuing more than $4.8 billion to farmers and ranchers through the Farm Service Agency's Ag Risk Coverage, that's ARC, and the Price Loss Coverage, or PLC, programs. Also included CRP programs. Now approximately $3 billion in payments will be made under the ARC and PLC programs for 2017 crop year. And approximately $1.8 billion will be made in annual rental payments under CRP for 2018. ARC and PLC programs authorized by the 2014 Farm Bill make up a portion of the ag safety net when producers experience a substantial drop in prices for covered commodities. PLC payments triggered for barley, canola, corn, grain, sorghum, wheat, and other crops. And over the next few months, payments will be triggered for rice, sunflower seed, sesame seed, and other. Estimated payments are before application of sequestration and other reductions in limits. That includes adjusted gross income limits, payment limitations as well. And also, USDA began issuing 2018 CRP payments to over 362,000 landowners. Well, on Thursday, Reuters reported that the European Union was on the verge to agreeing to start negotiations with the United States to allow more U.S. beef into Europe. According to the report, trade experts have already given their backing, and the approval process now is set to be complete this week. EU diplomats told Reuters they would look to raise the U.S. share of hormone-free beef imports into Europe. Now, the EU and the U.S. have had an agreement in place since 2009. It grants a quota for hormone-free beef imports, which currently stands at 45,000 tons. However, the quota was also made available to non-U.S. suppliers. U.S. share of that quota has gone from nearly 100 percent to less than 30 percent, according to the U.S. Meat Export Federation. So this new agreement could raise the U.S. share of beef from non-hormone treated cattle to 40 or 50 percent. The news comes as U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer told a Senate committee last week that the administration is interested in negotiating new trade deals with a range of partners including the EU, the UK, Philippines, and Japan. And with another Ag News update, I'm Tony St. James.